question. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to ShortSalePowerHour.com. I'm Kevin Kaufman. I'm Fred Weaver. I'm 4 0 at Lincoln. <laughs> what? Coach Collins at Lincoln, football Nebraska. 4 0 at Texas Lawrence. Nobody else can say that. I got to coach. Keep your horns up, guys. Yeah. They've been well, not ready for that way this year. No. <laughs> I hope you guys won on Saturday because this episode is airing on Friday. So I hope you won last Saturday. We don't actually know if you did or not. We did. We won at Nebraska. Yeah, but I mean the week no, after but that. The game after that. Yeah, like who you you're mean playing tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow's game. But oh yeah, we're, we're recording playing in Iowa, advance. Podunk State, Iowa State. Yeah. Okay. We did a blowout. Wow. I don't yeah. even think we have to show up. Well, it's like a 9 a.m. game. That's gonna be kind of early. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's okay. Hopefully, coaches like make them go to bed early. I got it, man. We're ready. All right, let's get okay. this dive in. What are this is actually about short sales, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about short sales today. So, hey, guys, I just I was coming over here to do a class. We're doing a group therapy session. I happened to walk in. and they Not invited us. Me. We don't need therapy. No. You no. have other people that have therapy. Group needs. therapy. It's around mindset. <laughs> and so, as I was sharing with you guys. I was, like, laying on the couch <laughs> talking about all my problems. <laughs> you were. You were. Yeah. And the coach was, like, praying over Wiping his tears up and stuff. Yeah. But um, it comes down to mindset. So, we had a conversation around mindset. Um, I'd like to let everybody know from whence we came. Okay, um, I started the mortgage business, got going in things, distressed properties, all sorts of stuff. Met you at Washington Mutual. Mm -hmm. Tell everybody the day we quit Washington Mutual, what the next day looked like, the first day you came to work with me at my home. Yeah, well, I remember the first day you were like, hey, come on over. And so I went over, it was maybe 10, 11 in the morning, uh -huh. somewhere in that ballpark, right? Uh -huh. Oh, you were and, an early riser back then. And, oh, I was a big early riser, right? Yeah. And so I mean, I woke up at like 9, 9.30, and then that was 30 minutes to get out to his house. Yeah, so yeah. that was really early for me back then. So literally, um, I drive over to Mark's house and he's back into the office and so I go in the house and you know he's like come on in he's on the phone and like you're like hey I'll put this on speaker I can hear this dude just like pretty much yelling at you like kind of laying in like no we're absolutely not going to do that we don't do that and that is not allowable and I probably he probably said something like the guidelines say I don't remember this that was line, 2004 but, yeah June and I was working on a short sale yeah and it was an investor short sale way before any of the shenanigans went on now and basically he was giving me a proverbial reaming me a new one yeah That's and so I remember Mark let him speak and then I remember <laughs> Mark just goes all right dude I've let you speak now you're gonna listen to me and he just freaking you know in the in the coach collar pastoral way non lose really, your salvation non lose exactly. your salvation exactly. he let the guy know that we were not gonna be playing by his proverbial box rules absolutely and that was my first experience and you and I have mindset Mindset. Absolute mindset. You know, I think, though, that mindset, while one can develop it from listening to other people and attending trainings and everything else, I think the mindset truly comes from also doing it and experiencing it. Yeah. Meaning that you can have an idea about being solutions oriented and stuff, but until you have an experience where you're it's up like against you're a wall with a lender and you have to use the mindset, then I really don't think that. I mean, well, well, we've well, learned through Brian Clemmer, Pastor Tom, Dr. Matt, short sales. Every Keller Williams, Gary Kell, everybody talks about the experiential piece of learning Absolutely. that anchors the philosophy well, into the being. Everybody talks about it. Not everybody. A few <laughs> of us do it. So, okay. And I'm not trying to put us apart from everybody else, but let's talk about short sales for a second because we talked about um, you know the difference in short sale businesses for our people that run a really highly successful one, and I'll use Brian Gubernick as an example, yeah. and people that don't, and I won't use an example on this one, <laughs> who just kind of run a mediocre, but they walk around like they do run a great real, uh, um, short sale business. And the difference is, is that you take a guy like Brian, he's been in there day in, day out for years and years now. Like he understands, as you would say, he knows the blind curve coming around the corner six weeks before it ever happens, and he can tell which way it's. Yeah, gonna... he knows which way it's going to go. He knows he knows which way to move. He knows he knows which way to duck because he's experienced it. He's had to come up with the solutions. He's he's had the experience of actually in the trenches. And okay? let me clarify your statement, or how I would clarify your okay. statement. You said Brian Gubernick's been in it. In it, it to me it. means four plus hours a day of negotiating short sale files from beginning, meaning listing to contract to submitting it to getting it received to BPO order to negotiator signed to submit it for approval to overcoming objects to actually close Keeping the deal together and, after it's approved. And then but, finding new buyers, all the yeah. stuff that goes. Yeah. But it's doing all of that part of the transaction before you go and try to leverage it out. What I see so many teams and so many wow. agents as we travel around the country is they know how to bring business in the door and they know how to talk a good short sale game because 
they're well versed in it, okay, better than your average agent. But, but what's happening is they can't close piece. multiple short sales a month consistently because they're they're literally not in it every day. Well, they've got somebody else on their team who they try to instill that same mindset into who hasn't done the same they training they have, who can't do it. I really believe the key to short sale success is doing it for a minimum of six months, four plus hours a day, and saying that you've closed, say, 30 plus short sales. Well, and I'll, I'll tell you, like, Let's they're, use they're, Brian they're, as an example one more time. Brian shared with us a conversation he had with his coach, yeah. his business coach, his real estate business coach, about what were his most dollar productive activities. Sure. Now, your typical real estate agent, your number one most dollar productive activity is lead generation. But Brian said, well, hold on a second. Sometimes my most dollar productive activity is getting there and solving a problem on a short sale file and actually getting a short sale approved. Because let's face it, lead generation is one thing. It's great to bring the business in. But you know, you know, I know that less than 40%, probably more like 20 or 15% of all short sales close. Yeah. So who gives a freaking rip if you can generate 100 listings if you can only close 15 or 20 of them? Yeah. Why wouldn't you just generate 80 listings, say, and close 70 of them right. or 75 of them? To me, to me, that sounds like a way more productive way to run your business. Did you say Gubernick focuses on the solution and calls that an activity? Absolutely. He Sounds calls like it a it's, that's no, that's our new word. Outback activity. He yeah. calls it a it's dollar a productive activity. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, absolutely. And that's it's outback. solutions at all cost because as the business owner, sometimes he has to get into that activity yeah. when most people wouldn't well, be willing to. And one of the questions that we get from agents all across the country, especially agents that already have a team and they uh -huh. get the concept of generating businesses, hey, should I just hire this out? And I'm telling no. you, no. Like you, you need to learn it first. You need to do it. You need to be in it. My, you my need new to be it. My new response is going to be if somebody tells me that they want to take on short sales and are doing that, I'm going to say, okay, they need to find four more hours a day to work. Absolutely. Like literally, if you're already Absolutely. working nine hours, then you need then to you figure out how to work thirteen hours for six months in a row. And you have to have that four. Thirteen time. hours a day for six time months. Block. If you're four already working twenty that, hours a day, four. sorry, you're just not going to sleep anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I mean, I'm serious about that. I What I have seen, absolutely, the people that are successful in this at a high level, it's because they've done it. Okay, yeah, I agree. Why to this day do you and I and still have the ability to talk about managing rental properties? Because well, we went and did it ourselves. Oh, yeah. If you ever own more rental properties again, are you doing it yourself? Heck no. No, but you know now what the person managing it for you. I know the is questions to ask. You know everything that's required because you've done the dirty work yeah. and you saw how you can miss I out. made the mistakes. I learned you have the the lessons. Experience, experiential learning. That's what anchors mindset. Yeah, Let's absolutely. use you as an example. Uh, I met you in spring of 2006. Okay? Yep. Spring of 2000, no, summer of 2006, June actually, or was it 2007? Well, no, met you in 06, but in 07 is the, is the Okay, thing. so June of 07, yeah. you just got your license. Just got your license, that's three and a half years ago. So you're like barely in the game and yeah. you're crushing it. So at that point, you came to an event Fred and I were teaching called Promise Land Real Estate. Mm -hmm. What was your experience around mindset? Tell them, the crowd, how you anchored mindset I just, what it like. I mean, honestly, I just picked up right then and there that that was all that mattered to me. Okay. It was like, why am I, why am I going to do, I had a why. I didn't, I don't remember asking a how. I just remember going, well, this is why I've got to do it. Or, you know, well, there, there's a solution that needs to, there's, there's an end goal, if you will. And, and I got to find the solution. Yeah. Call. Whatever it is. I don't even know what it is. It's Interestingly, just, guys, it. this was so powerful. Fred and I saw that Kevin had the mindset and it was before you learned short sales. Yeah, I did a short sale without knowing what a short sale was. Right. So we actually asked Kevin to stand up and said, would you teach the short sale section? And he looks at us and goes, even though I've just barely done one. And we said, yeah, because you have the mindset. And he goes, okay. And your willingness to step into it proves the fact. You got your hands dirty and you did it even though you couldn't tell what it looked like. Yeah. That's the anchored mindset that makes all the difference for short sales. That's, that right there is that thing that we talk about when I'm like, I can smell a negotiator. I can literally smell. He like Brian has got this. It comes out of his pores. You can smell it. Right. It takes about 15 seconds in the conversation to really see it in somebody or hear it in somebody. And you can tell whether they've got the wherewithal to yeah to do, to do it or not. Rock on, yeah. rock on. So, so what else? Have, can do you guys mean? smell like a negotiator? That's my question. Uh, and my question is this: If you're out there and you're watching this and you're negotiating for some other real estate agent. Tell them to watch today's episode. They can get mad at us, but you, whoever you're working for yeah. deserves to watch this episode and at a certain level deserves to get in there and get involved with you. And I'm not saying that because 
you're not doing a good job or I'm not saying that because I just want to give them more busy work, but I believe that you, if you're that person working for somebody else on their short sale team, you need to be working for somebody well, that understands short sales so you guys can together create more opportunity and create better and bigger results. You and I worked with buyers and, and then eventually we had to hire buyer agents, Oh right? yeah, absolutely. It's not that we just from day one never worked with a buyer. Absolutely like, We not. understand that, pro like the same thing with any other agent. No big agent just brought on a listing specialist on day one. Yep. No, we did not. it themselves and then they got to a point where they had a master. Do all you can do till you can't do anymore yeah. and then hire out. What's the same? Why would why would you think for one second that short sales are any different, Mr. Mega Agents? Yeah. Why? Or Mrs. Mega Agents. Yeah, whatever. No, <laughs> Mrs. can be called Mr. It just Sorry guys, I don't think uh, that YouTube has approved the twenty minute video yet. Okay. And I have no idea how long it's been. I, but it's I, been over I got, ten. I got one more conversation I'm gonna for check you guys. It out. Here's the mindset of short sales. When you're a listing agent or a mega agent, Mr. or Mrs. and you're working on short sales and you have the opportunity, you become like the Russian guy on the Cox cable TV commercial. I jump in it. And that's what you got to do. That's where the mindset anchors. I knew I was going to send it sideways right wow. there. That was a good accent, too. Wow. Yeah, One, two, two, three. Short sale power hour. Short sale power hour. Wow. That was really